Okay, so time for another capsule wardrobe. If you haven't seen these videos before, which you might not have because I haven't done one for a very long time, basically I take one of my patrons and they give me kind of like a list of their ideas and then I use that to, with them, design a capsule wardrobe of 12 pieces. And the point of this is not that they have to make every single piece, I mean, I'm sure they won't, and I'm sure that it will evolve as they go along, but it's to give them a starting place. I try to make the pieces as versatile as possible and make them all mesh really well with the wardrobe so that you can begin to get to a place of making full outfits quicker, and then they can take that and use it as a starting place. It's just to go through the process of building a plan together. And this particular capsule wardrobe I was really excited about because it seemed from the start like it was going to be a fun, interesting challenge. So this wardrobe is for Jessie. She has a list of different specifics that she would like it to try and involve. One of them is Edwardian inspiration. When we first discussed this project, she wanted to go even more heavily Edwardian. She wanted it to be very frilly and delicate, and she wanted to wear a corset beneath the pieces. And in the time since we started talking about it, she has moved and now lives rurally and realized that her requirements have changed. Now she needs clothing that is going to be a little bit more durable, a little bit more practical and functional, and less restrictive. So no corset, the corset's out. <laughs> So we do still want to use some Edwardian inspiration, but more of a modern silhouette. Another big element of this is her Scottish heritage and her family history doing Scottish dance. She wanted to include her family's clan tartan, she wanted to include a traditional women's kilt, and she wanted to reflect a bit the dance costumes that both she and her mother wore. And the other big element of this is climate. Jessie is Australian and she lives in a part of Australia with pretty wide temperature fluctuations between summer and winter, which hey, Midwestern, I get ya. So we needed to focus on pieces that were going to be very lightweight and also very warm, even if those two didn't necessarily need to mix. And then one more thing that I almost forgot, Jessie is a fairly proficient sewer with a lot of experience doing different types of crafting, including embroidery and knit and crochet. So she gave me free license to make it a little bit more of a challenging set of clothing and to include embroidery. She also gave me permission to include knitwear, but I figure she can add those pieces in wherever she wants. And I really also have no idea how to illustrate knitwear. So we just focused on the sewn pieces for this project. Okay, so that is basically where we started from. Jessie gave me a link to a Pinterest board where she had collected a lot of inspiration pictures and I dug through that and came up with a rough framework of ideas. Um, a set of more specific shirts and a list of different types of bottoms and jackets that we might layer with all of this. And I got started. So for the first piece, I'm going to do a tea blouse. Jessie had mentioned wanting an Edwardian inspired tea dress, something that was going to be very lightweight and comfortable in the summer heat, but something that would also be elaborate and detailed and beautiful and something that she could display her skills with. And I like that idea. The only thing that I suggested was instead of doing a tea dress, what if we split it into two and had a tea skirt and a tea blouse? She liked this idea, so we went for it. For this blouse, I'm drawing inspiration from this extant garment. I just think it's a really beautiful one. I am simplifying it a little bit. That one, there's a lot going on there, and because it's an old blurry image, it's hard to even tell what all's going on there. So basically, there is still a panel in the center front for some hand white work embroidery. I love white work embroidery. But then the rest of the detail is mostly coming from rows of pin tucks and from insertion lace. It's not actually as complex as it looks. It would be kind of difficult just because with patterning, you'd need to factor in all of the extra for those pin tucks. But for the shirt itself, it's not quite as elaborate as it might look like it is. I'm drawing it with a little bit of a looser fit, something that's going to have kind of big loose sleeves so that they're very comfortable. Uh, more of a high square neckline. That is something Jessie had asked for. She doesn't care for low cut tops and she doesn't think they look the best on her body type, but it also happens to work great with the Edwardian inspiration we've been using. Now for the waistline, I drew it with basically a string tied around it. The idea is that that would be a drawstring channel built into the shirt. This is an idea that Jessie can take or leave. It's just something that I've been playing around with for my own tops because I'm short-waisted. Bl modern blouses always look horrible on me, especially worn with skirts because the, f the moment you move your arms, they kind of pull loose and untuck and then they just kind of sag over the waistband and it just looks like you have a big saggy mono boob. 
I just have never liked the way blouses looked on me and I realized that that's why. So the idea I've been playing around with with my wardrobe is if I am going to make a blouse, make it with a drawstring placed right on the natural waistline so that the fullness of the shirt can be held in place and neatly tucked in. If I'm not going to use a drawstring, the other idea I've had is to just make it a full length shirt dress, something that I could wear separately as its own piece, or I could tuck into a skirt and wear it as if it was a blouse. But for this capsule wardrobe and these pieces, I'm just going to be drawing them with a drawstring waistband. So for the next piece, I'm going to make the matching T-skirt. Um, I'm going to basically stick with the same insertion lace and pin tucking detail work. Maybe we'll do like a bottom ruffled tier with some contrast lace at the base of that, but I don't want to I don't want to give it a ton of embroidery just because that would be a lot more work on a skirt and it would be a lot less noticeable. I like the idea of making this skirt and the matching top out of the exact same fabric and lace because then they would look like they definitely go together. They definitely belong together if you were wearing them as one outfit, but you could still divide them up and wear them as separate pieces. For the fabric, I'm thinking something like cotton lawn would be best. There are other lightweight semi-sheer cottons, like you could do cotton voile or historical cotton muslin, not modern cotton muslin. Cotton lawn is just one that seems to be pretty cheap and easy to find, at least for me. I'm not sure how different it is in Australia. I do know that Australia is the number one most expensive place for me to ship anything to. So this is what it looks like, and the only thing I don't really care for about it is that the waistband just seems way too plain. But I figure that you could add a belt or a sash or some kind of historical Swiss belt, you could do a lot of different things with it. So it might be good to leave it plain so that you can just mitch match and use whichever type of belt you want. Okay, so those two pieces really take care of the fancier end of this capsule wardrobe, but we really do need to start working on the more mundane, practical pieces. So for the first one, I want to make a blouse based off of this extant piece. However, this one uses a lot of lightweight cotton and lace, and it's very, very delicate looking. I think we could make something that's basically the exact same silhouette, but in a more durable cotton or maybe a linen. And then perhaps instead of lace, the contrast pieces could be made from a different fabric color, a slightly different shade. It could even maybe be a cotton print with two slightly different contrasting prints. Uh, I'm not sure. That's really going to be up to Jessie to decide looking at the fabric choices she has around her. Oh my gosh, I am watching a turkey out my window chasing a bug in circles and it's hilarious. That's so cute. <laughs> the thing I like about this shirt is that it's basically the exact same pattern and layout as the previous shirt, minus the pin tucks, I guess, but it's just made in a completely different style. But I like that. I like that you would only have to come up with one pattern for that. One version would have an added collar and long, full gathered sleeves. I'm not really sure how much I like the collar. I think that it's just not something that I would choose for myself, but I think that it would look really nice with knitwear and with especially open front cardigans. I think that collar folding over the edge of a cardigan would be really nice looking and it would really kind of show off the handiwork of both pieces. So, you know, since Jessie says she is also into making knitwear, maybe this will be a good piece for her. But this one will also button up the front, so it'll be a nice easy piece to get in and out of. Now you could use this piece primarily for winter wear, like lining cardigans as we just discussed, or you could choose to make the sleeves so that they unbutton and then roll up, and it could also be a summer piece. So yeah, I think this is a piece that would be very clearly Edwardian inspired to anyone who knows what to look for, but would also definitely pass as modern wear and not raise any eyebrows. This next piece is going to be very simple. We're looking at this inspiration photo again, and I just feel like a basic skirt made out of a slightly heavier weight material, either like a cotton twill or a heavier weight linen, something that's going to be very durable. It's not going to snag on things if you're walking around outside. It's going to be washable. It's going to hold its shape well. I feel like something like that would be a really good basic to have in your wardrobe and something in a very neutral taupe-ish kind of color so that it goes with basically everything you already own. All right, now that we have taken care of both the most fancy set and the most practical basic set, we can have some fun with the wiggle room in between. 
So for the first thing I want to make, in Jessie's Pinterest board, she has saved a whole group of pictures that I'm not entirely sure. I think they're 1920s dresses, but I don't really know. I've never seen anything quite like that before, but I'm not an expert on 20s fashion. But I just love how lightweight and comfortable they look, and they all have intricate embroidery. They're just, oh man, I love those pieces. So I decided to base a shirt off of those with loose fluttery sleeves, kind of a shallow v-neck, and then some gathers at the shoulder. This one would be a great canvas for some fun embroidery. I'm just drawing a simple design based off of what I can see from these pictures, but you know, if you were working with life-size pieces, you could do a lot more detail than this, however much you want. For the fabric, I'm not entirely sure what would be best. It would definitely need to be something with a really good drape, mostly because of the sleeves. I think there are probably cottons out there with the right level of drape. It would just be a bit of a challenge to find them. If not, there are different like crepes and silks and chiffons. Something along those lines would be good, but this would be a really fun one to make kind of sheer. And we don't really have room in this capsule because we're limited to 12 pieces, but if you found the perfect fabric for this, might as well buy a couple extra yards and make a matching skirt too. So I just colored this piece yellow because I think it'll go well with some of the other palettes down the line, but it could be anything. I think the key with this one's probably pastel though. <laughs> So yeah, piece number five. I really love this one. Then I had an idea that was not part of the original plan, but looking at the shirts that I'd made so far, I felt like we needed another really practical mundane one, but we needed one that was going to be short sleeved for summer wear because the other one, even though it could be worn in the summer, it was clearly more of a wintry kind of shirt. Jessie had mentioned that she loves pockets, so this one just kind of came out of nowhere, but I really like the way this one turned out, and it has that more rugged quality that we were looking to infuse somewhere in this wardrobe, but we really hadn't managed to do yet. This piece I think would be great in a neutral, unbleached linen, nice and lightweight. Not a ton of detail to it, but buttons up the front, has the waist drawstring, has extra pockets, has the reinforced shoulders, a nice v-neck but not too low, sleeveless. I like it. <laughs> it didn't seem like something that was going to take too long to digitize, so I figured I would just make it and send it to Jessie and see what she thought, and she liked it, so it's staying. Okay, so I heard back from Jessie this morning, and she likes almost everything. She loves pockets, so I think I'm going to add some more pockets to at least the work skirt. She does like the two new shirts I finished last night. No real, nothing really to amend there so far. However, the only thing she wasn't really a fan of was on the T-skirt, the horizontal line kind of midway up the skirt. She said she doesn't like horizontal details very much because she feels like they make her look shorter, which is a valid point. So I think I'm going to go redesign the lace details on that skirt before I get started this morning. The reason I had done that horizontal row of pin tucking and lace to begin with is not actually for the aesthetic. It was actually because I was worried that if the vertical insertion lace went all the way up to the waistband, then it would show the blouse being worn underneath. I realized that an easy fix for this would be either to wear it with a petticoat or to build in a lining to this skirt. Since it's a pretty cheap fabric, I feel like building the lining into it will almost be easier, but you could do it either way. The next piece that I needed to get digitized was the kilt. This was a very important piece for Jessie. She wanted a traditional women's kilt in the Buchanan tartan with the hunting colorway. This is part of her family heritage, and it would be great for special occasions, but it would also be a nice kind of daily wear skirt as well, as long as you weren't going to be getting it dirty. <laughs> the reason that I put off making it is because Trying to digitize geometric patterns on Adobe Illustrator is just impossible to make it look right. You can kind of get a little bit close, but not really. So I did the best I could. It's fine. As far as the construction of this, that is entirely up to Jesse. I don't really know much about kilts, and especially not if you're trying to make it in a precise, traditional way. My The way I sew is I look at pictures and I kind of just take my best shot. But this tartan is where we'll be getting the basic color scheme for most of the palette. And Jessie said that her favorite color is green, which works great. Now there is one more skirt on our list to do, and that is more of a wintry wool skirt. Regarding skirt lengths in this capsule, Jessie did say that she likes full length skirts, but living rural now, she realized that that just wasn't practical. And I totally agree because I don't even live rural, but just being outside and dealing with chickens, it's like, if your skirts are too long, they're going to pick up burrs and crap in the grass, 
or if you like have to bend or kneel or something, they're going to be dragging in the ground. So more of a mid calf or midi length skirt seemed like the best to go with here. So that's basically what I've been sticking to with this capsule. Jessie can fine tune that herself. I do find that if you're uncertain about length, I tend to go just a little bit longer because you can always go and hem it a little shorter later on if you find that you need it. But once that fabric's gone, it's gone. And you know, the more expensive fabric you're working with, the less fun of a realization that is. So for the skirt, I'm making it a little bit fuller. The work skirt, I feel like that one would be best at like a half circle skirt width. This one I'm making more like a three quarter circle skirt. We're going with vertical details again, vertical seaming for this button up panel in the front, which would be a nice place to have your actual closure. I feel like this particular style of skirt is very clearly Edwardian to anybody who knows what to look for, but it's one that is really easy to kind of twist more vintage style. Okay, so next day, here's what I've got so far. We have the four skirts done. There is this work skirt, which I made more vertical. There is the T-skirt, which I also made vertical. It looks a lot nicer now. And then this shirt here, I like it. However, I'm considering making the sleeves shorter because I kind of feel like maybe we need one more long sleeve shirt in this capsule, especially something white that will match every single skirt. She also has a lot of these like high neck, high collar, uh, insertion lace blouses saved in her Pinterest board. So I'm thinking one of these with long sleeves and then this shirt with short sleeves would really help to round it off. I really love this one. I darkened the colors a little bit to make it work a bit better with the kilt. And I really love this one. Like that would look so nice. And that would be pretty comfortable and versatile too. Um, this one, I changed the colors a bit. It's okay. I don't know. I feel like it would look better in person than it is illustrating right now. It is nice and practical and it would be good for just casual wear. It's probably fine. At this point I have four tops and four bottoms done and it's time to kind of start filling in the gaps. As I mentioned, one of the things I wanted to add was another insertion lace blouse, but I wanted to make it a bit different. Do a completely different lace pattern use different sleeves and a different neckline to kind of make it so that even though the two blouses were pretty similar, they would still fulfill slightly different functions. I think the lace pattern on this one is absolutely gorgeous, and I love the fact that there's another little tiny spot for some white work embroidery. Man, <laughs> I love these types of shirts. They're so beautiful. Next up on the list is a pair of pants. Jessie said from the start that she wanted one pair of pants and she really loved Edwardian secret pants. So I basically made those like straight up. I made them a little bit longer than the skirts and I made them not quite as voluminous as some of the secret pants I've seen, but I feel like they're a pretty practical piece that yes, there is that historical twist there, but they're still very good for just casual wear. For the fabric, I'm really not sure what she would go with. I mean, you could even make two pairs in different fabrics if you wanted. I feel like if you wanted it to be a little bit more hot weather suitable, you could use a heavyweight linen. Or if you wanted it to be just a little bit more cold weather suitable, you could use a wool. I'm not sure. It could be a lot of different things. I think that one of the main things though is you would want something that was going to hold its shape pretty well. I don't know, maybe even a cotton would be better than linen because linen does tend to wrinkle pretty badly and the pants might not hang correctly with the wrinkles. So the next piece was a jacket based off of one of Angela Clayton's Victorian jackets. And the idea behind it was that it would be something that would be warm, but would be primarily nice. Something to throw over top a winter outfit to make it a little bit warmer, but something that you could, you know, go out wearing and something that would really bring up the Victorian Edwardian vibes. The... I finished it and I had thought to make it plaid in the exact same tartan as the kilt to make them match, but then so that both of the color schemes would work together with everything else. I immediately realized I did not like that. It, I couldn't put my finger on why, but it just didn't work. So what I did instead is I made the jacket green and then just used the tartan for the lapels as a contrast. I still didn't like it. <laughs> I don't know. It just, it was kind of weird, but I finished it off just to see how everything looked and then started pairing it with the pieces. Okay, so the pants are done and they are a pants option or they can be a skirt, like hidden secret pants kind of thing. 
Um, I like the way they turned out. I like the color. It's showing up super dark on camera, but it's actually a nice medium brown in real life. I made the jacket. The sleeves are kind of spilling out from underneath, but it's just, I don't know. It doesn't work the way I'd pictured exactly. I guess that's fine, but it's not great. And eh, not really. Even with the kilt, it's fine, but not great. Um, and then with that skirt, also, it's, it's fine, but not great. <sighs> I don't know. I'm just not a fan of this jacket, and I'm thinking that I'm going to start over on that one. In hindsight, I think the reason I didn't like the first jacket is because it was trying a little bit too hard to bring up the Victorian vibes where they just didn't exist in the rest of the wardrobe. Like, this, this wardrobe is very subtly Victorian, and that was a very, like, extra piece. And it just felt very useless compared to the practicality of a lot of these pieces, and I think that's why it didn't match with almost any of them. Not to mention that it was a fancier piece, and the fancy pieces in this wardrobe are mostly white, which it really didn't go with. So overall, I basically took the exact same color scheme, and instead I just made it as a longer, warm winter coat. It's still vaguely Victorian styled, but it's a more practical, functional piece than that little fancy jacket would have been. And finally, for the last piece. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do here. We had a nice balance. We had five tops, five bottoms, one coat. So I asked Jessie what she thought, and she brought it back around to the Highland dancers, and she kind of wanted something that would bring more of that nostalgia, I guess, vibe to an outfit. So I decided to try making a jacket. I was thinking maybe another little like accessory jacket like we did before. I was gonna try making one of those based off of the typical jackets that these dancers wear, but maybe in a more durable fabric and with a more subtle cord detailing at the edges instead of bright gold. So I started working on it, but then I didn't even add sleeves yet. And I'm like, this is a great vest. So I just finished it off as a vest and sent it to her and she loves it. So. There we go. That is our last 12th piece. And other than sending it to her for a final run through to see if there were any last edits she wanted to make or colors she wanted to tweak, we are about done with this. So, how did we do? You know, at first I thought that this capsule wasn't versatile enough, but I realized that even though every single piece doesn't pair with every single other piece, it's still really great because it's such a broad foundation and it covers so many areas. From extremely simple to extremely nice, no matter what the occasion, I feel like with this capsule, Jessie will always have something to wear. So, for example, the more casual blouses don't work with the T-skirt, but that's okay because the T-skirt is nice and delicate, and you wouldn't want to wear it on the same occasions that you're wearing those blouses. I feel like this capsule can almost be broken down into three mini capsules. You have the T-skirt with the two blouses, and they look really great with each other. Actually, making that trim more vertical and go all the way up to the waistband really helped with the waistband feeling too plain, although you could still wear it with sashes or belts or any other accessory you want. The coat is great. I think it works well enough with all of the bottoms, but it's not too matchy-matchy with any one thing. It still feels like your basic winter coat that you can wear with anything, anywhere. The vest will be a great layering piece, and I hope that it will work with some things Jessie already has in her wardrobe. Actually, that goes for a lot of the capsule. Like, consider my 18th century capsule. It was really important that it match and be as versatile as possible because those pieces were meant to be worn over stays and couldn't very well mix with anything else in my wardrobe. This capsule, I feel like, does a much better job of writing the line between historically inspired, but still something that will be easy to pair with pre-existing pieces in your wardrobe. I did have another thought about that embroidered top. The embroidered details will put it in another class as far as the occasions you'd be willing to wear it in, so something you could try instead of embroidery is something like silkscreen printing. That way you could still have that pattern without having it be quite as delicate. You know, I think that I've made a lot of commentary throughout this video a lot more than I usually do, so I'm going to just run through the pairings and let you see themselves, and we'll call it a day.
Thank you so much for watching this video, and I wish Jessie the best of luck in her sewing endeavors. See ya.